we're going to cover section 4.6 in this video, and 4.6 is another application section. So when you're preparing for your test, make sure that you don't spend all of your time studying these problems. This is only one portion of your test. Yes, you do need to study this. It will be on your test, but make sure you balance your time uh, equally between the sections. Make sure you understand all of it and don't get bogged down in this word problem section. Yes, it's word problems again. So 4.6, applied optimization. So questions we try to answer using optimization are what are the dimensions of a rectangle with a fixed perimeter having maximum area? So that's one question we're going to try and answer. Uh, that's a mathematical question, and it's involved geometry. Another type of question might be what are the dimensions of the least expensive cylindrical can of a given volume? So in this question, it's more of an application to real life because you can think of a cylindrical can as being a Coke can, for example. It wants to make the least expensive Coke can, but it has to hold a certain amount of soda. So what would the dimensions of that Coke can be? You have to hold the soda that is required, but you want to minimize the cost of making that can. So it's going to be a tall, skinny can, a short, fat can, a medium-sized can, somewhere between. What kind of can would be best? Number three. How many items should be produced for the most profitable production run? So this can be an application of business and manufacturing. They want to maximize their profit. That's always a reasonable thing to do when you're a manufacturing company. And that's a question we can answer using this type of um, problem that we're going to look at here. So I'm going to look at four problems. And I want to encourage you that if you get stuck on a homework question, feel free to email it to me, and I'll do more. But I'm going to start with these four. Because these are the most popular and most traditional. So, an open top box. This is a box, but there's no lid on it. So if I were to draw a picture, here. So here's my box. Volume. So the volume is what we are trying to maximize. 
how much it can hold. The volume of a box is the length and the width and the height. So what we need to do is we need to try and determine an equation for the volume in terms of x, the variable we've already created. So let's look at our box. If we were to fold up the sides of our box, can you tell me how tall those sides would be? Well, if you look at our picture where it's already cut out, this side here, if you fold it up, that x is now going to be the vertical. That's going to be the height. So if I were to go back to my box here and write x as the height, that's correct, because that is what is um, creating the height of the box. It's that corner that you cut out. How big of a corner you cut out determines how high that side folding up is going to be. All right, so now let's talk about the base. So the base is actually going to be formed by this piece here. Remember, all of those sides are folding up. So this is the base of our box. We need the dimensions of this. Notice, it doesn't go on the edges of our sheet of 10, so it's not the whole 12 inches. The whole 12 inches is from one side to the other of the sheet. The base is actually the 12 inches minus the corners being cut out. So if we subtract off pieces here, then we end up with one dimension of our base. So the 12 was the whole span of the 10 flat sheet, and then if we subtract off the corners, remember there's two corners, that is going to give us one dimension of our base. So the first base is going to be 12 minus 2 of our corners, so 2x. The other dimension is the same thing because our sheet was originally 12 inches by 12 inches, and we still have to cut out two corners. Oops, that's not right. So the whole thing was 12, and again, we're cutting off two corners, each a length of x. So the other dimension for our base, you know where to put it, and right here, is 12 minus 2x as well. So we have three dimensions for our box, two for the base and the one for the height. If we plug those into our volume equation, we end up with 12 minus 2x times 12 minus 2x times x. The order doesn't matter of what you put them in because they're all multiplying. So you can FOIL as many where you want as well. I tend to do the parentheses first. So we need to simplify this by FOILing. Why? Why do we need to FOIL it? We're trying to maximize it. In order to maximize something, what is the calculus tool that we need to use? find the maximum of a function, we consider the derivative of the function. So if you want, you would take the derivative the way it's written right now, but that doesn't look like fun to me. So instead, I'm going to boil this out, create a polynomial, so that it's easier to take the derivative of. Right now, i got a double product rule. Product rule inside of a product rule. You don't want to do that. So simplify it. Volume equals. All right, boil. 12 times 12, so 144. And then 12 times 2x. Negative 24x, we have two of those, so negative 48x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 with an x squared. And don't forget that other x. So distribute that other x in. There you go. That's the volume. Remember, that's not the answer. Now we need to maximize this volume. To maximize v, Find v prime. Now this is the derivative with respect to whatever variable you have. You don't need to bring time into this equation like we did at 310. This is just the derivative with respect to whatever variable. So in this case, the derivative of v, a function of x. So the derivative of v, what is that going to be? Alright, 144x would be 144. Power rule. So 2 times 48, that would be 96x. Plus 3 times 4 is the power rule, and our power is now squared. Alright. To maximize v, we take the derivative and we set it equal to 0. We find our critical point. Remember, critical point is where the local max and min occur. That's what we're trying to find here. So, how do we set this equal to 0? What should we do? Oh boy. Easiest way. I forgot to factor it. Does 12 come out nicely? Hmm, it is a different way. Alright, let's see. Um, 12, 12 does come out. Alright, so if we pull 12 out, 
might be easier if you write it in the sitting order, because you are going to have to factor this one. And that's traditionally the easier way to uh, factor in the sitting order. So let's think about this. Two parentheses. So we have x and x. We have two numbers that multiply to be positive 12, but add to be negative 8. So what multiplies to be 12, but adds to be negative 8? About negative 2 and negative 6. That is not the answer, I don't think. Let's go back and look. How large should the squares cut in the form of to make the box hold as much as possible? Okay, well, we did find x, but we've got two possibilities. We need to check and see which one actually is possible. Uh, there's a mathematical way to do it, and we can try that, but I don't think it's necessary. Just use common sense. Your original 10 was a 12 by 12. What we just found is how much we should cut out. If we cut here, let me draw a picture. So here's my 12 by 12. If we cut 2 inch by 2 inch squares out of each corner, does that work? Does that make sense? Yeah, if x equals 2, we can do that. We have a total of 12 inches, we just cut 2. What happens if we instead try the 6? What if we cut from, this would be a square, we draw a square. What if we take our 12 by 12 square and we cut 6 inch corners? Well, remember, the whole span here is 12. So where's 6? If I cut a 6 inch corner, that means I am cutting halfway. There's one corner. The next corner would be this guy here. So this one's gone. This one's gone. Cut another corner, 6 by 6 corner. This one's gone. And cut another one. We just cut our entire piece of tin up. There's no tin left. So, six does not actually work. The reason for that is cut out a six inch square corner, you end up cutting your entire tin up. So, the correct answer here is x equals two. Let's find our units. Twelve was in inches, so our units are in inches. And there you go.